Hey, uh, PD Two Finger here with the video on this 4K action cam and the microphone system that I built for. This is just basically going over the filming system that we use when we shoot our making music remote jams at the woods. So first off, the elephant in the room in the room is this shirt. I didn't uh, uh, garbage pick the somebody else gifted it to me, but they did get it out of a dumpster, and that dumpster was a place called Crazy Nickels which was like a low-rent, failed Chuck E. Cheese, where they had like, uh, you would pay one exorbitant entrance fee, and then all of the games were a nickel. But the games were like Gordon's Quest, McCougan's Bluff, a lot of weird, like, ski ball with magnets and stuff, and you would never win. Anyway, the guy who ran it was doing a lot of backstabby business deals, and the village was always coming down on him for code violations, and safety, like hiring, sketchy, like a lot of weird stuff was going on. So this neighbor of mine, he lived with his senile mom who just used to verbally abuse him. He was like a 70-year-old guy, looked like Santa Claus, Gary, I won't say his land name, last name, Hamburg. <coughs> so Gary was into time travel and he was building a machine and he, <laughs> he, he got me the shirt. He also got like 300 MIDI cables. I don't know why they would have all these MIDI cables at uh, uh, for McCougan's Quest or whatever, uh, the Crazy Nickels, but he, he had some MIDI timepiece uh, rack mount things too. And he gave me one of those. He's like, I want to see what you can do with this thing. I'm like, well, I need the interface card. He's like, well, I've only got one. And he never gave it to me. And then like six years later, he's like, here's that card. <laughs> I'm like, I, everything's digital now. I don't use tape. But anyway, he asked me to go to the junkyard and get him catalytic converters because there's react there's uh, radioactive material in there, I guess. And like there was no like incentive of money or any reason why I would go. Like if because if you know about exhaust work, it's really like skin your knuckles, like use a torch, bloody hammer, banging sweat, horrible job. And I was supposed to go and remove all these catalytic converters at the and then like steal them from the junkyard and gift them to Gary so he could build this he would need uh, enriched uranium that's what he wanted or plutonium something it was just like I, are you effing kidding me I couldn't believe what he asked me with a straight face and then there was just like he was going to build this time machine and then I could like join him and be his wacky sidekick as we travel through time you know visiting various dumpsters <laughs> anyway uh, that's the story behind this shirt I ordered this 4K camera because it has a remote. Uh, you wear it as like a watch, and we, we make music. If somebody blows a cue or makes a mistake, you got to turn your guitar volume down, put the instrument down, run 20 feet over to the camera, stop the camera. It's just a hassle in it. It uh, makes the morale low, and it kind of ruins what we do. It's a lot of pressure on when you're filming already. So uh, with a remote, I figured that would really work well. So I heard about the action cams and with the remote, I'm like, oh, my problem solved. And then I read, oh, they have terrible audio. So this one has a built-in mic. It was a 4K action cam. It works. It does what it says, but it's not the greatest. I'm probably going to run it at 1080 with 30 frames per second instead of 4K. But that'll do fine. I got a 64 gig uh, card, cheap for 14 bucks from Micro Center, uh, rated at a 10. And then it comes with a battery. It's like a uh, 10, 1 amp, you know, 1050 PG battery. And you charge it. No charger. It charges through the micro USB port. So we went to Goodwill and got a 5 volt, 2 amp power supply and then cut that and put the other end with the micro USB cable on it. Because what's coming out of my computer's USB is a half an amp and it would make the charge time 1, 2, 3, 4. This quadruples the charge time using this 2 amp power supply. So we built that and then we have two like a that you plug into your cigarette lighter, 5 volt 1 amp thing and then it terminates in a lot. I cut off that coily cable it's like mm -mm, playing around with that so we cut that there was an extension and then another because those micro USBs they're all small they're real short and I wanted to be able to go all the way down from the tripod where the camera sits and then into a bag a couple feet, you know, long, straight, nice cable. So through all that process, it was like I didn't have a way to test that micro USB because you'd have to get like really thin wire and 
poke it in there and we were using an old phone and then I had one cable that I opened up that I caught it had a blue wire instead of the black and that wasn't working the next so I threw that I cut that one and threw it out this is after shrink booting everything together and tearing it all apart the next one had a short it didn't work so the third cable is starting to get like you're doing something wrong you know and then that worked then the mic uh, the 2.1 mil plug that goes into it like it comes with this lapel mic okay this plug I had one of these plugs in my stuff and it plugged in but it didn't make contact it was a little bit larger and it didn't make contact so the other thing was in the bias you have to turn on the car mode that's where if you set this on your dash and you run a cable up you don't run a battery in it it's every time you turn the car on it's just coming power through that uh, charge port the micro USB and you have to turn that on supposedly well when they made this it's inverted off is on and on is off so it, with two bad cables and then the bias lying to me you can imagine how long it took to figure that out with a double split cable ripping the shrink off it every time this was a horrible weekend of weeping wailing and gnashing of teeth this DIY was horrible experience they had no way of testing it it was just really really and it's the hottest time of the year it's 95 it's hundred percent humidity it's just horrible absolutely horrible so we're doing music and I need high quality you know audio on it and this lavalier mic is what they give you you know it's got a built-in mic that faces this way so I figured well I plug this thing in and and then clip this on I bought another adapter a little thing 90 cents it's 2.1 mil uh, male female 3.5 and then I got another lavalier mic that's 3.5 mil because you can't you can't find it you cannot find this replacement mono 2.5 mil especially a short cable would be nice I don't want all that cable you know so this weekend you know we got the camera it worked and then trying to make all these cables because I did the power supply I, and I did two of the uh, car charger type ones that plug into a female lighter socket that doesn't go to the sparky clips it's like fused and it goes to some proper spade connectors so all of this you know and then we have the old boxes from the old system because my old camera runs on a smaller diameter almost like a 2.1 mil but it's a little smaller so we have these cables it's a box with a plate of aluminum in it as a heat sink with a 7805 voltage regulator a switch and a fuse hard 12 volts comes in off a seal lead badassery sealed lead acid battery that's a big word through spade connectors on a large diameter cable it's fused there's a switch goes through the 7805 filter comes out through a 2.1 mil female 2.1 mil male cable carries it to the micro plug that plugs into it so I figure I've got two of those boxes that are all there's holes drilled in them so they breathe and we've run those for years on my five volt cameras one amp it's the same thing as this but it uses a different connector so my bright idea was to have a 2.1 mil DC male on the one end on a cable that terminates in a USB female like take a USB extension cord cut the male end off of it chop the white and green wire and tape those off and then use the red and black going onto this 2.1 male so plug in and then use the regular cable they give you the micro USB charging cable to go to the other end of the USB female extension which terminates in the 2.1 mil DC to plug into the box so we put all this stuff together this week and figured it all out this weekend the hottest weekend of the year with all of this failure with no way of testing the output of those cables because it's so tiny because I, I hate those connectors I really do and then having you know we went and bought a bunch of them the cables at Goodwill and then having two of them were bad and those were the first two that I grabbed that caught and started playing around with them. You know, it's like five pieces of shrink boot at every junction. And because uh, I'm like running low on it. So it was just an absolute nightmare to get all this work done. But there's video at the end of this. When I'm done yapping and complaining, you can hear how good this mic sounds. The mic is two condenser mic elements. They're about this big in diameter, like about a penny. They're not the real tiny ones. So this board is a, it's a cigar box. It's a piece of wood from a cigar box. And I bent this 
the bracket is out of heavy duty old plumber's tape, like my good stock, the stuff I'm running out of. And there's a wig nut here, uh, holds the board. There is a Velcroed double AA battery power supply that I, I'm going to probably replace that with a lithium ion rechargeable 18650 cell. I just don't have a single holder here for one of these batteries, but it's about the right size, you know, and then I wouldn't have to run to the dollar store and buy double A batteries to, although the drain on this is probably really low. So it's got the battery pack, then there is a Velcro for that. This plug unplugs here for convenience, I guess. Uh, there's foam rubber on the back because the bike elements breathe in the back and they pick up sound in the rear too. Uh, and then in the front, there is two mic elements. So this switch here is for power. This switch here, uh, and I need to get my wife's red nail polish and put that on here to indicate that that's power up. And then this other one, what this one does in the bottom position, it you're using a single condenser mic element. When you put it up, it's two condenser mic elements in parallel, not in series. Series would be if you had like negative, positive, negative, positive, and you connected them like this with the negative and positive between the two mic elements and then the leftover two negative and positives went to the wire to the input. Parallel is where you take the negative, positive, negative, positive and you connect them like that in parallel and then they just go straight in. So yeah, that's a thing. Parallel condenser mic elements and in the demo you can hear basically I just put some music on, set the camera up, I did the stock mic, plugged the lapel mic in unplugged the lapel mic again, then I plugged in this, and then I ran one mic and two mic. To my ears, two mic is a little louder, also sounds a little bit more, it's a lot louder, sounds a bit more compressed. Now, issues with this, well, it's a little bit, uh, the, 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 the preamp, there's a adjuster here, of, it's a 10K set and forget trimmer that, um, you would adjust with a what did I do with my you would adjust with a mechanic screwdriver which I just had out here anyway you're gonna have to take my advice take my word for it as I ruin the video you uh, when you turn, when if you turn that all the way down and then crack it open, it's already getting loud. And if you get to a quarter turn, it's distorting. So that's what I would change about this: is you know, wire in a resistor to ground, limit it, and then uh, use a lower value for the uh, you know play around to try to get the adjuster to fully adjust. Now that's I'm not going to be I'm going to set this. I'm going to determine the optimum spot for it to be set at, and I'm not going to touch it again. I probably will actually put a little bit of glue on there, or something like Loctite or super glue, just to keep it where it is. So it's kind of a nil point. So the idea behind this, or the story behind this circuit, if you look up one transistor mic preamp, the circuit's been around. Um, I needed to talk back mic for our little setup where we jam with headphones and a drum machine. So I found that circuit and I asked someone to do a Vero layout for me, Paul in the lab, who has like, it's the best electronic engineering blog on the internet. Anyway, he complied and I built it, works fine. It's a very clear sounding uh, mic. Anyway, someone commented and said that circuit has been around forever it's well known that those values aren't really the best this transistors kind of misbiased so the mods that i did the resistor values i use is a 1k a 10k and a 220k to more properly bias the transistor and then the two capacitors because it's three resistors two capacitors the output trimmer and a 2n3904 npn silicon transistor runs off of three to nine volts so the mods that I did were, they said the capacitance, you should use at least a one microfarad capacitors to give it more base frequency. And I use 3.3 microfarad, that's UF, it kind of looks like a backwards U, or 
whatever, 3.3, and it's non-polarized. Okay, now those are going to be kind of tough to find. For me, in my collection, my non-polarized stuff usually stops at 1 UF. You know, like I have got some metal films at 1, whatever, you may have more. I ended up buying a bag of 50 multi-layer ceramic capacitors. These little yellow jobbies, they look almost like a piece of corn. Those guys uh, for the Wolf computer. So I had a bunch of those. So that's what I used for those two capacitors. And it did seem like it had more base than the uh, uh, other one that I built. Another one, I mean, I don't know. We use it as a talk talkback mic. It sounds kind of shrill. But that element, that mic element came out of an Infinity SUV. It's like the, if you're going to call OnStar or whatever, or whatever mic they had, I worked at the dealership in the parts department, and that's where I got that mic element. They had about three or four of them in the uh, warranty, and I would grab them all, and then I tested them, and two of them worked. So I've got two of those. Now, these condenser mic elements that I use, you can get the small ones. They need a little bit of voltage to work. So that's voltage is supplied through the circuit. The ones that I used were bigger. They were more like a penny, so they carry, you know, they handle more sound pressure and may, maybe have a little bit better bass frequency response. I'm not exactly sure, but I, to me, big is more when it comes to that. Um, but the point is, if you're playing around with a camera that has an external mic jack, and everything you're plugging into it, like I had, we had some old mics that had bat took batteries in them, and they they weren't they just weren't loud enough, and I couldn't believe it that this dynamic lavalier mic was pr performing way better than a battery I put a double A battery, a microphone that I put a double A battery in. I couldn't believe it. What I needed to do was use a preamp. Now the thing is is that this preamp circuit puts some voltage through to power the mic. So I think it's a I would need a different preamp circuit that's not because these other mics that I was talking about, they already had the power supply on them. So this is where it's getting kind of complicated. Or you would need to. I might not be able to help you unless, you know, with this unless you had the exact mic element that needs the voltage, which you could you could buy those, you know, Electret condenser microphone element, and they're cheap. So if you're if you're playing around trying a bunch of mic elements in a camera and you're getting low output, keep in mind what you need is that preamp. That's what's going to solve your problems for you. If you have a mixer or a mini mixer, you can try hooking the microphone up to that and then running the output of the mixer into the camera and see what you get. And that would tell you, oh, well, PD's right. Because that's what you need. I tried I tried so many different things. And then having that, that bad cable was like throwing me off. I had the bad audio cable, too. It was a uh, 2.1, 2.5 mil like this. But the head was a little bigger on it. It was just a little bit larger, and it didn't make contact. So that was really, uh, I'm playing the world's smallest violin. This thing is cool. Stay tuned. Uh, we got new music. We're using drum loops with sound effects in them and, uh, instead of the drum machine. So the new music sounds great. We've been practicing with the husband-wife duo every day, just about. We got 10 new songs. There's going to be more. We're going to be using this equipment at the woods with that remote. So morale's going to be high. We're going to be rocking and rolling. My wife's sleeping in the couch next to me with her finger up. <laughs> you think it's what kind of leftovers I'm burned? <laughs> Shit, I'm going to have for dinner tonight. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you've got any questions about this, uh, good luck. <laughs> Peace. Oh, yeah, stay tuned for the video, the demo where I uh, uh, play you the... The, the footage I shot earlier where I actually try out the different mics so you can hear what I'm talking about. It's waiting to be spared. I know you never play, but drinks are free, it's so bizarre. Even if you lose a few chips, it's cheaper than the bar. I'm bored, Mike. Lavalier mic. Onboard mic.